Welcome everybody to my video demonstration. I want to show you how to use the NX Magnetic Solver for the analysis of electric motors. What you see here is a simple permanent magnet electric motor and it is built up in the NX system as usual. That means it is built up by sketches and extrude and maybe move objects. Um, and important, there are Fa uh, names on the faces. You can see that the names are coil 1, coil 2, coil 3 and so on for all the corresponding coil faces and the same for the magnets, magnet positive 1, magnet negative 1 for the magnetic faces. We will use these names later in the analysis to build up the FEM model more or less automatically. See what happens. We start the advanced simulation tool and there we create a new FEM and simulation. We choose the solver magnetics and the analysis type 2D analysis and we choose a solution inside the magnetic solver. We choose the magnetodynamic transient solution and we define that we want to have outputs, magnetic flux density, field strength, the current, eddy current losses, hysteresis losses, vector potential, displacement and we want to have tabular results. We want to have the rotor band torque, so the, the main torque of the motor. We want to have eddy current losses as tabular results and hysteresis losses. In the 2D register we tell him that the thickness of our motor will be 100 millimeters. So let's switch to the FEM part to build up the FEM model and let's use the magnetics toolbar. There is a function that is provided. It is called AutoFEM 2D and this one automatically will create the FEM model and all we, all we need based on the cut model and those names that are given there. You see that it will automatically create groups based on the names of the faces and on the colors of the faces. It will also create the whole network based on the text file that we import and that, impo that includes the definition of the winding and it will create meshes on all the groups that have been created. You see it is running and it automatically creates the meshes. The network is already there. It has a star point in the center of the motor and connections to all those coils um, corresponding to the definition in the text file. We are through. I set the display option to display the material property table. So this means that we will see the colors based on material properties now. First I give some information to the resistors. I tell him that the resistors in the network have an ohm resistance of 2 for example. Huh? Okay next thing is we go to the 2D collectors and we see all those coils and magnets. Let's start with the first one of the coils. The coil 01. We edit them and I go to my material uh, property data, my material library and choose a material copper for the coil. So this copper. And I tell him that the conductor properties are stranded and the number of turns will be 50. So you see that color has changed for one of the coils and I want to have the same properties from this coil copied to all other coils. For this I use a small function that is called multi-physical edit. The multi-physical edit takes a master property, so the coil 1 is the master, and the filter means that it will copy the properties from coil 1 to all other prop properties that have the name coil, and so this means all other coils have the same properties now as the first one. So next thing are the magnets. Let's start with the first magnet that is called magnet neck 1. The material properties, I choose a material with a permanent magnet property. I choose this one 
and I tell him that the coordinate system of the direction of the permanent magnet is given by a cylindrical coordinate system and this cylindrical coordinate system will be the absolute one. Further, I tell him that the motion property will be set to part can move because this magnet belongs to the rotor geometry and the system has to know about the moving and the not moving parts. So this one is the first negative magnet. Let's copy the properties from the first negative one to all others that have the name magnet and you see that now the color is all the same for the magnets. But the positive ones have to need, they, they need a small different information, they need another material property. I want to assign a material that has the same properties but an opposite an opposite direction of the of the permanent magnet this one so and again I copy the properties of this one of this positive one to all others that have the name magnet positive and you see from the colors that now the magnets are complete let's go to the rotor the rotor will have material properties of an electro sheet. I look for my electro sheet material here. There is an electro sheet sample. Let's have a small look into the properties now. Let's go to inspect material and go to the magnetical properties. You see that this one is using a nonlinear BH curve. Let's have a small look at the BH curve. Let's plot the curve. So this is the curve that is being used for this electro sheet. It's a realistic curve of an electrical sheet. So the magnetic properties, there are also electrical properties being constant in the three directions and there are information about the losses. So we use this material electro sheet for the rotor and we tell him that the movability will be set to part can move because it's belonging to the rotating geometry. The stator will have the same material so we use the electro sheet and the last two are for the air the first one is for the air that belongs to the rotor let's assign air to him and let's tell him that the movability is set to part can move and the last one is for the air of the stator so we tell him material is air and nothing else that's all for the FEM model. We are through. Let's blank the meshes for easier selection and let's change to the simulation file. So the simulation file. In the simulation we first want to include some um, expressions that we can later use and to uh, automatically create these expressions I have run a small script you see that the expressions now are there. There is a current amplitude of 6 amperes, a current frequency of 0.1 hertz, uh, a, a speed mechanical of 1 revision per minute and a time increment. We use these things now for the definition of the phase currents for example and other things. So first let's go to the solution again and set the time steps to say 90 and the increment to time increment defined in the expression list. Then let's define the rotation. We define an enforced motion on the rotor. We do this by defining the air gap rotor edge, so this one, and the air gap stator edge, so this one. And we define an angle that will be done every step by the expression rotor step. We could also define it by periodicity conditions if we had only a part of the motor modeled. So this is our enforced motion. Next thing we define is the environment to infinity that has to be given here and here on the two edges to infinity. So and now we define the currents. The currents are loads of type current and we want to define them by a harmonic current on circuit. 
start with the U face. The U face has to be defined between this point of the coils and this point of the network, the star point. The electric current will be given by the expression current amplitude, the frequency by current frequency and the phase shift is zero. So the next one is the V phase. The V phase is defined between this point of the coils and the star point and is defined with the same current amplitude and the same current frequency but with a different phase shift of 120 degree. And the last one is the W current. This is defined between this point on the coils and the star point and again has the same current amplitude, the same current frequency but a phase shift of 240. So now we are nearly through, we can run our solution. Let's go to solve. But one thing I want to change in the solver parameters, in the numerical definitions, um, because we want to have a very precise analysis of the torque and the losses, we decrease the epsilon value that is responsible for the preciseness of the newton robson scheme by 100. So, and then we start the solution. In this little window you see the solution monitor now running. You see that it is really running quite fast. The time steps are already... already six steps have been calculated. The seventh, the eighth, you can see this in the monitor. Nevertheless, the solution will take about two minutes, I think, for these 90 steps. So let's make a small break and see again after, after the solution has finished. So, after two minutes now, the analysis is through and we can stop all those windows here, this one and this one, and let's have a look into the results. First thing I want to see is the tabular results, so I go to the xy function navigator of NX and I see that there are my results for torque, for eddy current losses and for hysteresis losses. I want to see the results of the torque first, so we plot this into the window and I see the nice um, behavior of torque. I can ask the curve for information to see what are the most important points. I see the mean value is minus 10.4 newton meters and I see the mix minimum and maximum value of 14 and 7 uh, the, what defines my motor ripple. Okay, and the eddy current losses, let's have a look at the eddy current losses. You see they are calculated on all the magnets and on the rotor and on the stator. Let's see them all in one plot and let's do it the scaling a little bit. So let's scale it a little bit more. So this is the behavior of the eddy current losses. If you add all these curves you get the whole eddy current losses on the motor. The same is for the hysteresis losses. We have hysteresis losses for each of those parts in the motor. If I plot them and if I scale a little bit I can see the behavior of those losses, um, the rotor and the starter and all the magnets being defined there. Huh? Okay, now that's all for the tabular results. Let's go to the um, to the plot results now. The solution one is opened and let's have a look at the results that are available. We have the flux density, the magnetic field, the current density, including eddy currents, the eddy current losses density, the hysteresis losses, the potential and the displacement. The flux density is the one I want to see now. So, and let's use this nice template. So, the flux density, okay. Um, the flux density shows that the maximum value is about 2.5 Tesla and we can run the rotation with the post-processing functions of NX. So see the nice behavior of the rotation. And in the same way we can see the magnetic fields, the current density, the losses, hysteresis and 
and anti-current losses. So and now I thank you for your attention.